Welcome back to the mailbag on Super Tuesday Recap with your host Chris and Deepom here. We're finally doing the mailbag. We're a couple days into September, even though this is an August mailbag. Uh, don't hold us against us. We, we just had, you know, life things came up, guys. Life comes up. It just happens. Um, but we're here uh, to take some listener email and also cover some of the news that's come out uh, over the last month. There's been a little bit of news. News? There's been news? A little, just a little bit of news. Just, news. A little, just a little bit of stuff. Um, uh, first thing first, so I did email you. I, did I email you the rest of the emails that came in? Because there was a bunch of emails that came you did. in. You did. Okay, cool. I wasn't sure if I... I know I was like, oh, Deep Hunt only gets on me when I don't when I don't send I was, them. For the record, we didn't record on a normal date and time, but I had the emails a day early. Very impressed, not going to lie. Yo, very impressed. Everything was fine. And then, because normally if we, if we delay recording the mailbag and, and we don't say anything, right? This motherfucker put out a video. And next thing you know, floodgates open and we got like five to six more emails. I'm like, you just made it more work for us. I wanted to be comprehensive. And I mean, we can skip Shannon this because I know she's listening to this. Let's just skip her. <laughs> just skip her. I don't know. If you skip her, she's just going to call it. <laughs> just show up for the podcast again. <laughs> All right. So let's jump into this. Um, the first one here is from Steve. It was actually about Agent of Shield. And I think I held off on it last time. I think we wanted to wait until after Agent of Shield um, finished. I think that's what we did this. So here you go, Steve. Uh, says, correct me if I'm wrong, but season five and season six were supposed to be the series finale, uh, f- final enders. And, and again, the show gets renewed. I'm ecstatic, uh, though always confused. Will agents be the lifeboat? If, uh, will agents be the lifeboat if Phase Four underperforms? Yes, bring back more savvy agent Peggy Carter. What do you mean if fate life? Okay, so let's do this. I'll do this in phases. Season five was a series ender. Season six never was. Yeah, yeah. Season six was the last one we did. Yeah, they they, they knew did. they knew six and seven were going to be the right. They knew they were getting two. So five. If you look at that last shot in five, you can end the series there. Yeah, and I think they, they shot it that way to do it that way. Exactly. Season six, nah, bro. They knew from jump that this is a bigger story. We're dividing the season into two seasons over two different summers. We're going to tell the story. Will Aiden's use a lifeboat if Phase 4 underperforms? Why would you ask such a question? Hey, man, what happens if I burst into flames tonight in my sleep? If I just become the human torch? It's just as fucking likely as Phase 4 underperforms. Like, here's the thing. Who... Let's say on some off chance that Phase Four does underperform. I don't believe that, but let's say it. What does that look like? Even for I don't even like what. If every film doesn't hit a billion. <laughs> oh my god, we're totally there. That's where we are. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, I'm not wrong. It's like the last no, four out of the, fi- the last four out of the five hit a billion. So I think like like if Eternal if Eternals only does like 750 million dollars, which it's not, right? <laughs> Right, that cast is gonna do a billion dollars. That right, was right, cast right, God, right. Damn. But like, but like, it, that could only do a seven hundred fifty billion dollars. People go, mm, MCU is uh, MCU is uh, it's falling off, right? But then you still come back in, and you they still, you got to remember, they still got the Fantastic Four and the X Men in the pocket. Just not even the not even in the chamber. That's in the clip in the bag. They gotta reach for that shit. Right. <laughs> they gotta reach for that shit. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> Just, Y'all gonna stop questioning, motherfucker. Um, but yeah, yeah. Stop yeah. wasting our emails on these questions. Like, yeah. What if it and? Yeah, I think I I think um I mean and and I think that, I think you're right, absolutely right. I think I think agent we're gonna find we're gonna get that conclusion for Agent Carter we wanted. It's gonna happen. They're gonna find mm-hmm. someone. They they know that's happening. So because I think they got a time jump more than once because the 1930s is pre Agent Carter that we were watching. Oh, I, oh, of course, uh, of course it's gonna be so multiple time. jumps. And and I think you you and I kind of agree like the meta story is that. They become the founders of Shield. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, which, and that's comes, how you tell that story. Full comes, circle. comes full, full circle, circle. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, let's see. Oh, here, did I forge you this one? Oh Lord. No, I'm sorry. I didn't. No, I did. I'm going through you my email. Some, this some, one no, and some, some, some sort of. No, no, no. Sometimes, sometimes I get, uh, I, I get, uh, um, spam emails. And so I was about to read the spam email. <laughs> and I was like, did I forward this? It's from Shannon. It's spam. It's from Shannon. Did, I, did, I, did I forward this one? Uh, Matthew says, uh, hey guys, uh, first recently came across y'all on getting into the character corners and CBBCs. Um, has been my pastime when I travel for work and ease the annoyance of flying. Man, that sounds great. Uh, thank also, you. Yeah, thank you very much for that. Also has gotten me back in the comments getting both Marvel Unlimited and DCU. Uh, pay them their cut. Y'all, y'all really get to the heart of comics in ways others don't. 
That's you know what? That's actually great to hear and read this. Can we take a, stop, a second here? Because that means y'all don't get it. Like we do this like legitimately. Like I was talking to someone. Someone we were at uh, brunch on this weekend, and someone asked me how I started podcasting. I kind of explained it, and when I got to the MTR part, and like I was like, well, I had this idea about let's just do. I, well, I guess on the sanity check, and I guess on the Angel Shield reviews, and from there it's kind of developed into what it's become. We love this shit. Yeah, I mean, I skip podcasts I don't care about. Yeah, that's yeah. why you haven't seen me on any of the um, X Men rewatchable shit because y'all hate yourselves. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and it's good to get, I, like I said, I, as it, sounds, it feels great to hear people say that we got them back in the uh, reading comics, and um, <clears throat> you know, especially uh, yeah, Marvel and DC. Um, yes, even you, DC, because look, we have somebody who's actually bought DC Universe for the comic shit. So go figure. Um, pay us our cut. Uh, but two, it also feels good to hear people say that uh, they listen to us talk about comics because I've been having like three days of people telling me that I don't know comics. So um, it's it's been. It's I know been- we need. To, I know we've got the rest of the email to read. I want to miss the top of the show. Could y'all leave him the fuck alone? They're not going to though. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna like on the week of mailbags. Like I don't. You know what I really don't want to do today is talk about that fucking movie. You know what I'm gonna do today? Talk about that fucking movie. Well, so we're gonna talk about the movie not because of the stuff that happened there, because the reviews that come in. So what? We'll spend a little bit of time on that movie, but trust me, it's gonna be. But last like time. the fact that like you and I get to come in and talk about something we love with anything less than love in our heart about it is because of these assholes. Yeah, you're right. It is. It is. It is. Like I look for this is low key one of my favorite shows we do every month. Yeah, no, I love doing the mailbag, guys. Keep writing in. <laughs> um. Anyway, my question thought: uh, Riri kind of has to be introduced in a Spider-Man film, doesn't she? <laughs> maybe not. Uh, maybe not have to, <laughs> but it might. It makes the most sense with Peter being close to Stark as he was. He's he's become the Stark nexus of the world. Not to mention with the rumor out there of Young Avengers, a team uh, with Parker Riri to lead that into that would be kind of perfect. Protege of Stark, and then inspired by it, it just kind of writes itself. Uh, how would you write Riri in the MCU? There's no way they leave her on the sidelines much longer. Keep doing what y'all are doing. Now, he did follow up with the email because it came out after the Sony Disney News. We'll talk about it a little bit later. Um, and Gabe says, maybe not. So here's my thing. <clears throat> the reason why, even, be- even without having the Sony Disney News, again, which we'll talk about a little bit later, coming in, I wouldn't introduce Riri in um, a Spider-Man film. And, I- and my answer would have been because of what ended up happening, which is Marvel doesn't own Sp- Spider-Man. So... They always, if you look at these films, they've always entered, they only introduce Spider-Man people, Spider-Man villains or, or, or people related to Spider-Man in those films. Now they might introduce Spider-Man into their own films that they own. They never did the other way. So you'd never see them like introduce right. like X-Men, an X-Men character into a Spider-Man film because they don't want to play that game. And they want, they, they, they did this in a way so that, uh, that Peter Parker, that Tom Holland Peter Parker was going to forever be tied to the MCU but at any point you could cut off that Spider-Man arm and it wouldn't affect the rest of the, the MCU and so I don't think that they would have ever introduced Riri in uh, Spider-Man but to go along your same point, it's a perfect place to introduce her in Black Panther No I mean, I, I mean you don't have to be there but because now it's, I think if she introduced Black Panther it makes the world feel small Well. If if no, I don't mean Here's, like in Wakanda, I mean in the Oakland uh place that. No, they, I get it. I get it. I get it. First of all, we're from Chicago. Very important. I know. I know. Second I know. of all, but second saying, of all, I thought about this question. So when you guys give me creative writing prompts, I'll give you something. How would I introduce Riri? I wouldn't. I do a eight issue, a eight episode miniseries on Disney Plus called Avengers Academy. Right. Basically, Froggy's open. A, up a school where we're going to, you get to, it's basically the Stark Expo, but it's a competition amongst kids. Now we're creating an entire new rogues gallery of tech villains, and Riri wins it. And you don't have to tie Riri to Stark. Anything. Right. Because that's the beauty of what they've done here. They've made Stark the backdrop of the MCU. You could do Ironheart as a standalone tomorrow. I would love to see her brought along more naturally, but you could do it because of the world they built. But that's how I would do it. Give me, give me five, give me eight episodes, uh, ensemble cast, talented kids, and let them go act and let them go do Avengers Academy. We'll, we'll get all those classic Iron Man villains with the variation of the armor. That's where they'll all come in. Whirlwind, um, Blizzard, I know we saw on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., uh, Living Laser. All these variations of different people using the tech in different ways. 
And the only person you can truly master is Riri, who then gets Friday as her onboard AI. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's something that came out from even the San Diego Comic Con stuff is, you know, those movies, I mean, those, those Disney Plus shows are going to, are, are inside the MCU. And so they, I remember, like, somebody made breaking news. The, MC, the, the Disney Plus characters will appear in the movie. I'm like, no shit. Like, of course they are. Um, and so, like you said, now, you, now you've opened up this world where now any of the Disney Plus shows can then turn into their own movies. So now it doesn't feel too hard. It's, it's easy to introduce a character in, like you said, six to eight small episodes in a Disney Plus show. If they take off, or even if they don't take off, use that to then move into a, a, a larger format. You're, into you're limiting movie. act one of these next phases of movies by putting them on Disney+. Plus. Right. I mean, it's just, and you can do so much more of them. You, you, you now have two places you can put them in. And one doesn't have a whole lot of pressure into it as much as movies do. So, yeah, absolutely. I think that's a great idea as well. Um, but my idea was, like, again, using the idea of the Wakanda expanding into these i know that one was built in oakland we built one in chicago and you can actually yeah. technically technically you could do a combination right. of both right technically you do a oh, combination sure. of both, right where it's like they've now made it so that they've expanded out and now it's avengers academy again and that ties you to one of your elder billion dollar franchises because they have multiple of them now um, it's so crazy that we get to talk about conflicts in this way in 2019. Like, I know we're gonna we're we're obviously gonna be honest about some things that we heard about some news that have fallen, but this is just a cool conversation to have because I am so I, excited for this podcast. Billions of dollars, multiple friends, just fucking amazing. I just still never gonna get over that. Um. Anyway, here it comes from Amani says. Uh, Chris Chris took his dragging after the uh, SECC like a champ. Nobody dragged. No, he him. didn't. I, and I didn't because I wasn't being dragged and whatever. Uh, but when he said whatever. Marvel would come back, probably hold back from D23 around the corner. This is what he meant. Uh, well, look, we knew Kamala Khan would eventually make her way into MCU since Phase 4 is the all-new, all-different roster, but fucking Mark Spector. Uh, we're really getting a Moon, a moon Knight heat check and She-Hawk. Uh, Black Panther 2 getting that Avengers May spot in 2022. Yeah, because that's, that's May 2022, right? Yeah. Yeah, um, that's the day. And that's and that, he's right. That's the Avenger slot. Yeah, that is the Avenger slot. So yeah, yeah. That's a. I wonder if that means. I wonder if that means they're capping it off at Black Panther two. What do you mean fa- for Phase Four? I think Phase Four. So let's okay. We'll talk more about this. Obviously, right, cool, cool. they've announced eleven projects in the next two years. Yeah. Like Phase Four isn't. It's not going to be as easy to find as just here's a series of movies that came out. And, and that's, what I'm, that's what I'm thinking too. It's like it's this is gonna, the this, idea of what a phase is is about to change. Yeah. Um. Oh, let's go. And that was just the Marvel slate. Sony tried to hold Disney for ransom. They laid their cards on the table and called the bluff. Uh, we got Aunt May and the Mand- Mandalorian and Ian McGregor uh, back as Obi Wan, Spider Spidey Who. And I know you got. Look, uh, go ahead. Sorry. No. What? Goddamn nigga. Yeah. <laughs> God damn nigga. Like, yo, I I was I was honestly in on Disney Plus. But they dropped you and fucking McGregor. Yo, and I'll say this right now. I am insanely happy and uh, and it's unexpected joy the two Spider Man movies I got from Marvel. Mm-hmm. Nothing about it's ruined for me. It's perfect. The two movies are mwah, put them in a bow, put them in a safe, love them forever. Disney does not give a fuck. It was never yeah, we'll, we'll have that conversation later, but it was like, and again, I still don't think talks are completely over right now. No, it's never, nothing's it's ever never, over. It's never over, until, it's never over until they decide to put Tom Holland in that Venom movie, then it's over. Then <laughs> when, it's over. Yeah, you know, when, when, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm listening to right now, like, and we'll talk about this later, but like, when Tom, if Tom Holland ever shows up in that Venom movie, the deal is done. There's no coming you back. You can do it the other way. You can do it the other way. I'll accept Tom Hardy popping up in a Spider-Man movie. I, if you make Tom go to the ghetto that is Venom? Have you have you gonna seen, be wire working this bitch? Now, I know you said that he works the other way, but have you seen that clip of Tom Hardy in Venom? No. Nigga, no. The what? the what he's the 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 way the, the Wait, hold on, Tom, there's a clip? Yeah, the clip of Tom uh, Tom Hardy. Uh, oh Hardy. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You, have you seen no, him play? I'm, I'm not going to see the movie. No, no, don't see the movie. But just like the clip of him in the in the grocery store where he turns the venom and he eats of it is so goddamn terrible. 
No, he can't be. He is not allowed you're right. to. You're touch. right. Let's protect Holland. Yeah. Pro- you're right. Protect if, but Holland. You're the it's not even at this point. It's not even protecting Holland. It's protecting the MCU. We have. A, we protect have. Protect the, the, the brand. Protect the brand. Strong. Protect the brand. This is brand protection right now. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Um, and I know you got into it on the on the poll list, but nigga Hickman, I should should I just clear clear space in October for that X Men podcast, huh? And this is just a prelude. We're not even fucking ready. This is like when uh, Thanos snapped Loki's neck, stomped out the Hulk, and after slaughtering the uh, survivors of Asgard, and then we got to the title screen. What are we going to do when the main book rolls around? Uh, and so did y'all have that Popeye sandwich yet? Uh, I believe the trader did. You, you, had, you, you were able to get one, and I did not. What? You got a Popeye sandwich, and I did not. Fuck no, I didn't. I thought you said Sue didn't to go get one. I tried to tell her not to. Says, you, it's not worth it. Oh. Don't, put, don't risk your life like that. <laughs> She's like, yo, it was too crazy again. <laughs> So we so she went two Popeyes away, dude. She drove for it. <laughs> I tried to talk her out. I was like, "Baby, don't do that." I'm telling you, it's just oh not real. God, I still yeah. haven't had I, it. I couldn't get it. I couldn't get. I I couldn't get it either. I, and then, I'm furious. And I made I made the. So I saw this tweet. Them telling you it's going to be six weeks on spicy is the most Popeye shit ever. It really and is, and that's though. funny as fuck. <laughs> And it, it, it it's true. It's fucking it's true. It's true. Now you do, we want to talk about protecting the brand and being on brand. Now that's some on brand shit, right there. That's some on. Yo, we got six weeks on spicy. God damn, that's some Popeye shit. <laughs> oh, the most Popeye man. shit that ever Popeye. Yeah. So we were on Insanity Check. If you guys just listened to Super Tuesday, we did the Insanity Check together last week. So give it a listen. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Please do. Uh, um, yeah. And as for Hickman, yes. I bought a new whiteboard. I spent sixteen dollars on a whiteboard in Walmart. Going, I need to keep track of this shit for me. God, it's I can't trust this infographics. Lie, motherfucker. Life X isn't even on that motherfucker. Life Six isn't even on that motherfucker. I hate him. I hate him, Chris. <laughs> I hate him. Right. I, I mean, have you read this entire run so far? Like yeah, six oh, or yeah. seven times. I'm picking up new shit every time. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, it's hmm. yeah, so good. It's so good. So good. Um, <sighs> and. I'll say this, man. I'm really glad. I mean, we've taken a break for it now. We're going to be doing a, a little character corner short on Wally West. We'll, get, we'll pick back up in the X-Men. I was going back and started, I started also reading some stuff for our, uh, pick up back up our, um, our Claremont X-Men run. And I just got to say, um, you guys should probably go back and read that Claremont X-Men run as you read the Hickman stuff. I feel like it's um, kind of... kind of Hickman kinda, clearly did. Yeah, Hickman clearly did. Because I'm, I'm, re- I'm like, wait a minute. I'm going, wait a minute. Hold on. And so, Y'all might think that we have some inside information. Now I think we just nerds. No, just, and we've we, talked about doing Chris Claremont as a team right. for years. Now. Yeah, and we did. And it just so happened that we... Uh, you know what? People are going to start thinking we're lying because we started it on the, what, the 75th anniversary of like the X-Men. And we started, we started... And they were like, oh, we see you niggas. Yeah. We're like, oh, shit, excuse yeah. me. I didn't know it was this serious. Yeah, yeah. But not 75th, 75th anniversary. It was, something on the, it was something on the day. We were like, Seven Fifth Podcast, and it was it was it was like it was like the release date of the first issue. Of yeah, the it was something like that. It was like weird. I'm like, it literally, it was just by accident. And now the Hickman shit, I'm just, I don't know, man. I don't know, man. Marvel hire us. That's what I'm saying. So, um, don't even hire us. I'll be a co- subcontractor. Just cut me a fucking check. <laughs> Not Hickman. I owe him money. Right, right, right. The rest of y'all. I, uh, yeah, I owe him a lot of money. Um. It, yeah, here's from uh, Shannon. It says, doing things proper right. Ooh. Thank you. Thank you for writing in and not calling in in the middle of a podcast. Uh, D23 and Disney Plus. Uh, I already talked about this on the Fast Color Review and on Twitter, but never in our life has a, has a channel been more tailored to my taste. Every single thing from the original films and shows to the Marvel and, and Star Wars properties to the, the docuseries and the back catalog. This has been made for me, and I'm just so happy I'm alive at this time. Despite the world going to hell, I'm signing up for it the first full year. Yeah, I am too. I mean, it was always funny to me when people said they weren't going to buy Disney Plus. I'm like, have you? They liars. But well, here's the other thing too. It's like I get it. If this was a normal, not even with the catalog, right? With stuff that was being promised, if this was a normal company with a streaming. Wait and see. But Disney did something different than others have started, which is they came out the gate with all this content. Normally, like somebody will they'll launch one big thing, and that's and a bunch of small things you don't care about. Like Disney Plus came out with, you know, like they, they announced like two years ago and they, it's been a slow roll of information and and building it up and promoting it. So now they've given it to you. For, now everybody's like, yeah, I'm buying that shit. Even the people were like, I wasn't going to buy it. Now everybody's trying to buy that shit. And, yo, the price is ridiculous. It's six ninety nine. Even if you don't do other bundle deals or anything, six ninety nine. 
How can you say no to that? For all the shit you're getting. Like, you, you just can't. Uh, comics. I read all the volumes of The Boys available on Comicsology Unlimited. I don't know why you did that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I did that. Honestly, I was most offended by the black characters. Outside of Mother, Mother's Milk, they sounded like the, like the Falcon book. I also caught up on the Miss Marvel and finished out G. Willow Wilson's tenure. And I'm digging into Eve, Eve Ewing's Ironheart and uh, Sullivan Amid's uh, Miles Morales next. I really want y'all to read Tennessee Coates' Black Panther. I have this Captain America stuff on my phone, too. I have a lot of Marvel stuff to get through, and Wicked Divine is almost over. I also read Die by Karen Gillan. It's, almost, it's absolutely brutal. A 70 Hands art is doing, is doing the art. Um, Before yeah. we move on, how much time do you think we have? Yeah, I, I don't have all the time to do all that stuff, but I've got like I've got, I'm up on a lot of the books you mentioned. Uh, Miss Marvel, I haven't read reading, but I've been reading uh, Ironheart, reading Miles Morales, Spider, uh, the the Captain America. I've gotten into the co- the the Coast Black Panther. I haven't. I've talked to people about how I feel about indie books. I'm not great about keeping up with them, um, and I read them in collections because I can't have my time wasted. Same way Chris didn't watch Young Justice until it was delivered to him on a fucking silver platter. You sound salty about that, though. I am the saltiest because now I've seen season three. I know that your ass ain't got away. So yes, <laughs> it's one of those those th- that regressive ass thinker. I'm like, you got to make sure you you make the road, but for the guys after you, make it uh, easier to walk. Fuck that noise. On this one, <laughs> Young Justice, I'll be aggressive. I'll be an old football coach. That's what they did in my day, son. No helmets. <laughs> you don't know if you're ever gonna get that call again <laughs> he's like yeah no i can't do that shit um and going back yeah yeah there's a reason why and, and here's the thing we were supposed to do a comic book club on the boys after watching the boys tv show i'm like i'm good like, no i'm just like it's not even worth it it's not even worth it at this point like they've improved on the source and i'm okay with that because i'm not sh- yeah yeah the black characters are offensive like everything in that book is offensive and it, again not saying this is a, to, as an excuse, but it's a product of his time. A lot of the writing sometimes during that time, especially in these edgy books, were that mm-hmm. way. And um, yeah, the shock was the point. Yeah, the shock was the point. And um, I'm glad that the uh, show isn't doing that. Uh, Sony Marvel. I know y'all will get to it, but I just have to say, people, if people don't stop acting like Sony cracked the Spider Man code because of Spider Verse, who made a quarter of what uh, Far From Home made, and Venom, which is now I'm <clears throat> I'm now ninety percent. 90% convinced Feige consulted on without credit. I'm going to scream. Folks are going to be mad when they go see Spider-Man homeless and they have to see Uncle, Bi- uh, Uncle Ben die in a flashback and Peter using uh, a dark tech. I uh, can't wait to listen. Um, again, we'll talk about the Spider-Man stuff later, but like, I'll say this about the Into the Spider, people saying, well, they made Into the Spider versus okay. WB makes Young Justice. They also made um, Justice League and BBS and Suicide Squad. It's a big difference between usually the animated shops and, you know, the live action shops. Hell, they, their, their animated movies have always been good. People for years have said, why don't you just do what the animated movies do? Also, high key, I'm pretty sure Feige is uncredited producer on Far From Home or on uh, Spider-Verse. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure on that one too. Yeah, yeah, not sure. Would not be surprised. Uh, next email, simple one from Justin. How ugly is Tim Drake's new costume? I'm not ready to talk about it. <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> have you seen it? Thankfully, I have not. There's so much brown. What can brown do for you? Yo, name the first comic character. Okay, Wolverine's brown suit does not count. Aside from Wolverine, who pulls off brown? <sighs> um, oh my god, I'm looking at it now. What the fuck is this? What is, what is this? What is... This is an assault. That's what, what it is. is. What, what is he now? The brown robin? They haven't announced a new code name. They gotta be giving them a new code name because it's like, that's what is what is. No, no. I, uh, my no. hope is that this is one of those dummy covers that they're gonna release that like the actual suit looks different. Not to mention, yo, fuck you, Justin. Hey, not to mention, give him a cape. Give him a cape. No, well, you know what? I'll adjust to no cape. 
it feels like his back hits her if they ditch the cape. I feel like I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying it's what's happened. Okay, I'll brace. I'm chained here, but I'm just yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm now. I'm fucking upset. Next, you see why I was like, I'm mad at Justin. He had to bring that shit up. Fuck you, Justin. Fuck you. And you, and you had the audacity. He, 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 he had the audacity to text me to, to, to today, asking me on the insanity check. Now we're gonna have a discussion next time you're on the show, Justin. Like this is some fucking, this is some fucking terrible shit. Um, Ooh, and, and, let, and let this be a placeholder, cause I'm talking cash shit. It can be just a little bit better than this. I'm act like they reinvented the flash suit, <laughs> <laughs> which is still the perfect superhero costume. It is. It is. Uh, Paul from UK says, Hey guys, hope you guys are doing well. I've been going through a Hickman bu- binge recently and went through his Fantastic Four and Avengers New Avengers Run and holy shit. Johnny Storm's death is probably the closest I've came to tears in reading a comic. I'm really enjoying his current run on X-Men House of X t- at number two. Wow. And he's only getting started. I can't wait to see what else he has in store. So October is the X-Men podcast, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Just so everyone knows, we're going to talk about the what Hickman's doing once we can see it. Yeah. Now we're all too we're all too close. This is too it's too much going on. Uh, I've been too reading, much going on. yeah, I'm reading a lot of comics lately from Batman Justice uh just B- Batman Justice League. The Batman Who Laughs was everything I wanted it to be and more. I'm trying to uh, I'm I'm about to start reading all of Jason Aaron's Thor run, which I'm excited <laughs> for. You are in for a treat. You are in for a major treat. Um, I'm jealous of you. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, they made Spider Man as well, and amazing it, it is well amazing. The Hunter arc was great. Nick Spencer is killing it. I was wondering if any of you have been reading the Friendly Neighborhood Spider Man. Issue six is definitely one of my favorite issues of the year. Would definitely recommend. Okay, so I'm not reading it regularly, but issue six I did parachute in for. <sighs> have you read it? No. It's when you read it, your mind will go back to an older issue. Hmm. And it's it's really well done. I think this is. I don't want to lie here. I'm pretty sure it's Tom Taylor. Is this Tom Taylor too? Which tells me that you know he needs a hug. <laughs> this is the or first time. He, this is the first time you said this. Like he wrote, it. he's writing deceased too. Oh yeah, yeah. Which is hug this man, but like this here, like it's it's like the the issue he's talking about, issue six. I would recommend anyone give it a shot. Um, that's if you want to have an Eisner for single issue, single story of the year. That's got to be in the short, short list. It's that good. I'm gonna check that out. Uh, also, finished the new season of Agent of Shield. Greatness and always. Did anyone get a vibe that Analysis and the Analysis way, Annihilation way was an influence for this villain? Uh, sorry if you brought this up in the recast, but I haven't had a chance to listen to them since I've been late on watching the season. I could see, I could see uh, little similarities, and I was I was thinking that maybe it was their spin on it. If not, I can imagine this is something they, they might do later on in the MCU. I mean, I definitely know something they're going to wait for later on in the MCU with the Fantastic Four and everybody else coming. I, out, think, so. I think with him going Cosmic Annihilus is closer than further away. Yeah. Um, also, uh, congratulations on the nomination for the Character Corner. Thank you very much. A very Thank well-deserved, you. and you guys are awesome. Keep up the great work. Uh, Paul from Scotland. Thank you. Yeah, interna- we're, we're international now. Yeah. Um. Who is this? Oh, they didn't sign their name, and I don't. It's like initials in their email. Sorry. Um. So we have another email. Hey guys, first time listener, long time. First time messenger, long time listener. Want to uh, start off by saying that you guys have gotten uh gotten me into comics. I've always looked. I've always sort of played the outsider looking in when it came to them. But in conjunction with the MCU, your passion and love for these characters and your multiple podcasts, the ability to see past the bullshit, the bullshit of gators on on YouTube gaslighting newcomers. Has finally got me to bite the bullet, and I'm glad to hear that. Thank you so much for that on that front. Wow, you know what? Really, thank you very much. That is actually that makes it worth it, man. It really does. Um, as for my question, I have two: one related to the announcements, and one that isn't. But I'll I'll try to bring it around. Uh, so for the first one, are people going are are people starting to use the audience score on Rotten Tomato more more and more lately to either rise up or bring down a film? I noticed this with films like Godzilla, King of, the, King of the Boredom, a film that you guys helped me realize was worse than I initially thought on top of the racist stuff you brought up with this film, the setting of the film in America and Alita, Queen of the Incels, a film that I found very much boring despite the fans jumping up and down about it claiming it to be a super fin- feminist movie. Yeah, I fucking hate that movie. Uh, the fans of those films will usually go, well, uh, more people like this than the critics, so the hell with them. I know film is subjective and there are those that genuinely get a kick out of those 
that aren't complete uh, holes, but I can't help but wonder if they're using the audience score out of genuine love or despite anything they don't like. Case in point, the Mothra is a better female hero than Carol. Crowd, yes, they exist. They send a moth that died a, a shit death. Uh, will this also affect the more diverse properties coming from Disney that people don't like for petty reasons, or is it something that won't be a big deal going forward? Will the fact that Dude Bros can't get over the gay Eternal and Valkyrie being by be something that'll cause review sites to review their terms on top? Review their terms on top of the D twenty three stuff announced. Um, there's a lot there, but just to say, um, it doesn't fucking matter. Um, that's it. Like the Rotten Tomatoes critic score and the audience score, they don't matter. Like at, in this day and age, and I know this is be a, a, a it used to be a saying that people said to kind of ch- tongue in cheek, but everybody's a critic. It doesn't fucking matter. I mean, we're going to talk about, we're going to talk a little bit about these early reviews coming in for Joker. It doesn't matter what I say. What matters is you find a group of people or you find people whose opinions you, 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 you trust on films and use them them or you go see the film yourself. I mean, that's all it did come down to. Reviews have never really mattered. Even when films bomb at the box office, it's very rarely have I ever seen a re- bomb at the box office because or succeeded at the box office because of reviews, particularly the first weekend. Right. Now, after the first weekend, yes. But that first weekend going into a film, I don't think it matters. Like, for instance, BVS still had a massive opening weekend. You know? It dropped off after that for several reasons. One, because Zack Snyder couldn't shut the fuck up. And two, because <laughs> word of mouth and reviews. Even then, it wasn't, I don't think it was the reviews per se, because the reviews going into the film weren't that great. They were in the 50, they were in the 50% range. I think what it was is, is word of mouth. And that word of mouth only comes in after that first weekend. And that's what happens. And so I think word of mouth means more than anything. And at this point, reviews are more about that. Like, as, as a critic myself, and I'm going, I'm saying as I go, get ready to prepare to go to the Toronto Film Festival, like, as a critic, my quote-unquote review is just early word of mouth. I have nothing, there's nothing that me or the other critics have over anybody else other than our perspective. And even then, you just got to look at it. Like, I tell people all the time, I'm like, hey, Logan's a good film, but if you're an X-Men fan like I am, you're going to hate it. That's a more valuable review to me than me sitting there going, oh, it's so this and it's so this and so that. Like, that one little statement I made is more information for you determining if you want to go see it. I can see a film and go, I can see a film like Hobson Shaw and go, guys, that's not a good film. However, most people are going to go see it are going to enjoy it enough to be fine with it. Like, that's all that really fucking matters in this. And so I don't think that those, I, I honestly think Rotten Tomatoes will get rid of their audience score. I think it's pointless. It's just opening up for trolling. Um, and then the critic scores, even then, on, even then on the critic score, I tell people all the time, the Rotten Tomato score on, 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 uh, is, not, is, is an aggregate. If you really want to see what people actually thought about the films, you have to go to look at each of those individual uh, critics and see what they actually said about the film. And it doesn't matter if it's an outlet, because an outlet could have a person who reviewed 10 of the Marvel MCU films, and then they got somebody totally different to review the last one you just saw. And so it's not a consistent thing. At least here at MTR, we have a consistency with you know, kind of know where we kind of trend on what we review and how we review and where we come from. And then we have multiple voices on some podcasts. So like me and Roe really loved Ready or Not. Brandon hated it, but he also made some good points as to why he hated it. So you can then take that information and inside if you want to go see a film. Um, and I think that's what it is. Like I'm a critic and I'll tell you, our voices don't fucking matter on this shit. They don't. <laughs> they they really fucking don't. Um, because if they did, then films like Booksmart would would break the box office, and films like Venom nobody would go fucking see. You know, that's a good point. Lion King made 1.5 billion dollars with a 53 percent Rotten Tomato score. You know, and even his audience score, I've seen people go, oh, yeah, I didn't like it. It's like, it made $1.5 billion. Doesn't fucking matter. Somebody out there liked it. You know? Because you don't make, here's the other thing, you don't make, you don't make over a billion dollars and some people don't go see it twice. Once you hit a billion dollars, people have gone to the theater to see it multiple times. Repeat offenders. Yeah, so repeat offenders at that point. So. I mean, look, that's, that's how we got to break the record for Endgame. I was a repeat offender, repeat, repeat offender. Yeah, yeah. Sign me up guilty. 
Um, as for the D23 stuff, with the current ratio of shows to films coming from Marvel learning towards more towards film, shows and films, at the moment, do you guys think the phases will look like this from here on out? Like five movies and seven or uh, five, five movies and seven or so shows every two years. And you think the dude bros that tried and failed to sabotage C, uh, CM will do it again for Eternals and so uh, Captain Marvel will do it for Eternals and so on. Personally, I'm so glad to see, uh, glad Feige gets to show what a Perlmutter less universe looks like. And I can't wait to until the ine- inevitable Secret War is like in like phase six with all new legacy heroes as well as other events. I thought of uh, Falcon Cap, Mighty Thor, uh, uh, Kamala, uh, Carol, and the rest getting to do a modernized version of Ticket Invasion or the Korax uh, saga. Something I look very much uh, forward to. Sorry it's a bit long and unfocused, but I hope you guys have a nice day and keep doing what you're doing and what you love doing. Um, I think, I, I think Deepon was right. I, I don't, the, what we think of phases are going to change. Um, and I, and I, honestly, I think phase four, phase four reminds me a lot of phase one in that I feel like it's an experiment. Um, and I'm not saying yeah. that they think it's going to fail, but I think they're trying to see, really gauge, okay, how far can we push this? I mean, could you think about it? I mean, they have a couple of, they have a, like, they have Thor. So if, if, if Black Panther falls into phase four, so you have Thor. Black Panther and Doctor Strange are, are coming back. Outside of those anchors, you have a lot of new unknowns. Even though Black Widow film, in some ways, is a, is a kind of an unknown, too, right? Because, like, she's always been a side character. She's one of them visuals, but carrying on film, even I was like, I don't know about that. I, I'll go see it because it's Marvel and it's MCU, but I don't know about that. So I feel like there's still a lot of unknowns. I think out of the new ones, Black Widow is probably the one that's most has it already built in fan base and known. Um, and then you got the Disney plus shows, which I think then comes into this idea of how do you even check what, how do you even know what success is on streaming? Even Netflix hasn't figured that out yet. You know? Um, so, and I don't know, I don't know what success looks on, like on streaming because the streaming giant that's been around forever hasn't fucking figured that shit out. They're canceling shows that people like, they're not canceling people shows that people don't like. Uh, they, they don't share their fucking numbers. So I don't know what that looks like. Now it's Disney and maybe D- Disney has a better idea of, and it's basically going like, we make a ton of fucking money. We don't give a shit, <laughs> which it could like, I cannot underestimate that. Right. They're, they're not, they're not Netflix and that Netflix is operating in a loss. Disney's not. So Disney could be looking at it like, we don't really give a shit. We're going to put it all out there and it's fine. You're going to tell your six. You, you do your six issues, your six, six episodes, and then we do somebody else and get somebody else six episodes. And now that we introduce the character, we can throw them into movies anytime we want. Like, I don't know how they're doing it. Um, and I, I, I'm not 100% sure they know right now either. Um, I think it's all kind of looking around. I think they have contingency, contingencies and they've planned this out. But I think they're trying to wait. There's a, there's a lot of wait and see to see what happens with that. So I, I also think that at this point, they're playing with house money. Absolutely. They've got the they've got the leverage. They've got the the liquid capital, and they've got the uh, artistic capital. To say we're gonna take some fucking shots. We're gonna find out what happened with Iron Man. Was they took a shot? They found out what was next. It was an emotionally resonant story with the the big the big explosions of the hero stories. You focus on the super. You keep you get them into the super. You keep them with the man. And now their thing is to say, well, what's the next thing to hit? What's the next formula we can hit? What's the next thing we can do? And as opposed to just saying we're taking one shot with Iron Man, we're taking a lot of shots with a lot of different properties Look, in a lot of different directions. And they know they got at least a $1 billion film coming in. There. Outside of the ones that are coming back, Shang-Chi is going to make a billion. Shang-Chi and Eternals are going to make a billion. Uh, yeah, right. I mean, I, uh, Eternals, I'm like, that could maybe, maybe, they're, they're, and I don't know. Because again, you go back to what you were saying, what's the internal story to tell? And I don't know. I mean, with that cast, it might be enough. But like, you know, Film with a Chinese American lead. They open it. Come on, come on, come on. That that film's gonna make a billion. Like it's 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 gonna do Captain Marvel and Black Panther numbers. It just is. It's gonna do that. You are now giving a marginalized group that doesn't see themselves on screen very often. You are gonna give them a mostly Asian American or Asian Asian cash. You are gonna do everything that Iron Fist didn't fucking do. Um, that film's gonna make a fucking billion dollars. They know that. Yes. So. And then Black Widow, who knows what that's going to do, right? Because that, that also could do a billion. So it's like... Easily. Like you said, right. I, I think that that would be the sneaky billion. Right. I, I, I'm thinking so, too. Like, 
that could actually make the sneaky billion. Even with all the people going, oh, this is, uh, I don't, I don't care, I don't want to see it, uh, you know, uh, fuck Scar Joe. I hear you guys like saying that. That's my sneaky pick for a billion dollars right there because there's actually is a large, there's actually a large group of people, white women out there, who wanted to see a Black Widow film and now they're getting it. Yeah. I'm just saying, I'm amongst those people. Hey, l- hey, I'm just saying, just saying. I'm, I'm, there's a lot of people that are trying to easily dismiss that film, saying it's not. I'm like, mm, mm-hmm. I'm not going. I'm not well, taking that bet. Done, if you, I, I did. We we're doing the rewatch for Between Two Palms, and something Susan said in one of the later episodes after Endgame was like how full they felt. She felt that the widow story, and this is also because we watched them all kind of in sequencing pretty quickly. But how full she felt like widow story had been told, even as a supporting character. Mm-hmm. Like her turn in Civil in uh, Winter Soldier is really good. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Hey, and I'm so, gonna, yeah. like, mm-hmm. the appetite for this, for more of this character, it's existed. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying. I don't, yeah, this is not what I'm so, so, at all. So, so, even, so even if you take out, again, take out Thor 4 and, and Black Panther, which, again, I think those are easy billions. Because Thor's, Thor's been trending up that way, you know, after, after Ragnarok, and then you're bringing Taika Waititi back, and then you're, you're giving, you know, Jane the hammer. Again, billion. Black Panther two, easy billion. I'm going. I'm now going up to a billion and a half for that one. Um, mm-hmm, that's fair. <laughs> like so, yeah. You got Black Widow, sneaky bill. I mean, it's just like you're again, like you said, you're playing with house money. So at that point, <laughs> and again, I've gotten to the point where I'm like, hey, maybe you know, not every film should make a billion. But I'm looking at this lineup and I'm going, there's a sneaky amount of money here in these 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 films that they announced. Like they could. If you had told me two years ago you'd be saying Black Widow could make a billion dollars, I would have laughed at you. Now, I'm like, it's possible. Does it need to? No. But it it could because it's real. And it really could. So, I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. It's fucking crazy. All right. Uh, Gregor wrote in. Power Rangers Day is a thing, and it was yesterday, 26 years ago. Uh, so it wasn't yesterday. It was, uh, I guess it was August 27th. I mean, August 28th. Uh, Power Ranger Day is a thing, and it was yesterday, obviously, uh, August 28th, when this email came in. 20, 26 years since the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers first aired. I have, to point that, uh, I have to, point, to point out what you missed. The show has had 25 seasons. 25 fucking seasons. Jesus Christ. Uh, the latest Red Ranger is black, and he is the fourth black man to be a Red Ranger. Uh, Sleewin Award, who played T.J. Johnson, was introduced in the later half of Power Rangers Turbo, season six, when Tommy handed down his Red Ranger powers to him. Yes, Tommy was a Red Ranger in two seasons. This is all Greek to me. Um, Brandon J. McLaren, also, who played Jack Landers, was a Red Ranger in Power Rangers SPD, season 14. 14 seasons, what the fuck is going on here? Where it was a police force called Space Patrol Delta, where there was an A squad of Rangers, and our heroes a B squad. The colors were all ranked. This is one of the many handful handful of Ranger series where the characters and adult professionals and not uh, where are adult professionals and not teenagers. Uh, Ika Darville, who you all know as the black guy from Jessica Jones, he was in Power Rangers. I would introduce him as Scott Truman, the Air Force pilot who became Red Eagle Ranger in Power Rangers RPM season seventeen. He's still my favorite Red Ranger till this day, and I met him at a, a, a at an ecstatic dance event in L.A. earlier this year. Rory D. Travis from South Carolina is the current Red Ranger in Power Rangers Beast Morpheus, season 26. Jeez, I just can't believe there's this many seasons of Power Rangers. And I haven't really sat down and... You said what now? I'm going to say my piece at the end of this. Okay, and I haven't really sat and watched very many episodes of this show, but I can't wait to see the return of Jason Lee Scott, the Mighty Morphin Red Ranger, in season 27 next year. This is the first series since Harrisboro's purses the Power Rangers from the penny-pinching uh, Saban, and I hope it's better than previous seasons since Ham... Uh, brought it back from Disney. The new Saban era was a struggle for me, and it lost the magic of the old Saban era back before Disney bought it uh, around 2002, I think. I hope the la- post her, uh, Hasbro purchase improves the brand. Thanks for reading, guys, and the House of X uh, and Powers of uh, 10 is real. You want me to read this? I have part? two comments. There's, there's another email he followed up on it real quick. You want to read that one real quick and then go? I didn't see that. So some of these you didn't submit. Yeah, there was there was some I didn't. So uh, just real quick, Deepal, I forgot to mention you should watch Power Rangers Lightspeed Rescue, in which the group is a small task force and a branch of the military. There you go. Oh, okay, good. I'm glad we I'm glad we cut that up. Okay, so look, two okay. things. One, 
just reading this email. Like, I've read this email before. Just now did I realize that Jason Lee Scott's name is Jason Lee Scott. <laughs> I've always read it as Jason Scott Lee. I thought it was weird that they named him after um, Bruce Lee's kid. And now I think it's even weirder that they named him after Bruce Lee's kid. Um, two, every time someone says, I can't believe you don't know this, I can't believe you don't know that, da, 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 I want to point to this email. Because the depth of fandom exists across all different cuts. Like, if you go to those, like, fan wiki pages, these wikis are, like, super elaborate for, like, shit like Sonic the Hedgehog. So when he tells me season 26, I believe him. <laughs> when he can list the Black Red Rangers, I believe him. And when he says Red Rangers and assumes that we know that that is the nominal leader of that team of Rangers... That's how you know you're too deep. You're deep. Like I can, I have, I can describe my three favorite lightsaber forms because I go deep in certain things. I get what it's like to go deep, Gregory, and I salute you. I'm never going to watch what you told me to watch, <laughs> but I salute you. Stop laughing. I salute you for your commitment to the fandom. That's what a fan looks like. Someone who's positive, inclusive, and who tries to make the tent bigger. Thank you for being a fan. I will continue reading the Boom Studios Power Rangers book because I think it's very good. And that and that there alone is where my fandom stops because for me, Power Rangers is a nostalgia thing that I liked when I was in third grade. And that's like when Power Rangers were, that's what hit for me. And after that, I moved on. I went back to comic books. But it grabs you. It took you. I like that. I'm happy for you. 26 years? I know you've seen some lean times, Gregory. I'm a Transformers fan, Gregory. It's, it's been lean. But you listed four leaders, black leaders of the Power Rangers that I didn't know about. And for that, I salute you, sir. You thought I was going to be mean, didn't you? No, I did not. I did not. Okay, good. No, no, I, no, no. no, no. I always just like other people's nerves. Gonna... No, no, As no, the no, particular no, no, nerd no, no. that I am, I can't be out here denigrating oh, someone no. else's nerve. No, no, I'm not. No, never. I'm not. I just, I just, and I knew that there was a, I knew there's a big fan base behind Power Rangers. I just oh, didn't know. It's real. No, no, I know. I know it's real. I know it's. There's a reason why I don't joke about the Power Rangers anymore because I know. I've, I've caught I've caught the bad side of it. <laughs> I, I have muted my shit to drink some water, and I hate you so much. All right, so it's like I'm just saying, like I I don't talk about mm-hmm. power age anymore. Yeah, no. it's going on my headstone. Right, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like there's certain there's certain fandoms you don't talk about. And Power Rangers is one of them. Um, I, just, I don't talk just, about how Mary J. Blige can't sing. Whoops. Right, right. No, or, or dance. But um, the uh, I, I swear to God, like I just seeing it written as 26 years, I was just like, holy shit, I'm old. <laughs> I just it just it just it just, it just it took me back a little bit. Took me back. Um, another email from Feet. Like I said, guys, when we uh, extended this, this we're, we're now getting into. Overtime because uh, Deepom. This is, over. <laughs> this, 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 this is my are, fault. Teddy. These these are the overtime emails because Deepom decided to uh, put out the the the, the bat signal. I want to be honest with the listeners, Chris. We want to put the bat signal out that we hadn't recorded yet. <clears throat> so here comes Felix. He says, "Hey, hey, Felix here. Only got a couple of questions this time. Firstly, on a scale from one to ten, on a scale from one to here's my credit card information. How excited are you all for Feige to destroy us every few months with these Disney Plus shows and movies? I excited for the uh, Falcon show and Wanda's and kind of met on the rest, but with Miss Marvel." And She-Hulk, they got me again. I mean, I'm obviously going to watch all the shows. I'm not a dummy, but Miss Marvel was what got me into comics for real after trying the new 52 and tour- souring for a couple of years. I've been following uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, Camilla uh, uh, since the beginning and read every single one of her appearances, but though I'm a few issues behind on Champions because it hit me as living rent-free in my wallet. Can, can I say something real good. quick? Because we just talked about Miss Marvel, and I want to be honest here. I've never read word one of a solo Miss Marvel book. Oh, you haven't? I'm aware she's a good character. I'm aware it's good, well written. I enjoy her in Champions. I, I wouldn't, I, on one hand, I think I have reached critical mass in the current ongoing books I'm reading. But two, it's nice to know that something is good out there and it's specifically not for me. You know what I mean? Yeah, I've read the first few volumes of the. I, I, I just think it's so it. cool that there's something so louded that while it's, like for me, there's no like immediate grip or connection. Mm-hmm. I'm just so happy to see it. Yeah, no, I. It's it's part of that. As much as people will say, 
that oh I see my, my W Marvel enforcing policy all this other stuff. But the, to see that characters like this and my, her and Miles created a whole new section of comic book fans, like that's why we do this, right? That's the whole purpose. And you're right. I mean, the idea that that making you know that book accessible, after, especially after you read some some other stuff, and you're like, it's not connecting me. But you read that book, and you're saying, yeah, that's it. If that's the one that grabbed, yo, I'm so like for me, I know which I know the issue of X Men was. That grabbed me. And so for other people who have that experience through a character that I have no tie to, I get, I, I, it makes me so excited. Because one, it means that this shit's passing me by, which is what it's supposed to do. And two, the, the tent's getting bigger. Absolutely. Now she's going to be a feature character in the new Avengers game that comes out next year from Square. Mm-hmm. Like, I always, and I'm, this is something I'm learning about, like kind of evaluating, growing, learning, and changing. On the way I look at this stuff, I was always with the camp of let's let these characters some good years and good story under the belts before you throw them into the big screen or we're taking the best of them. But what I've learned is that these new characters built in this new society and this new way of thinking, we're starting with the best of them. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, you don't have to peel away racist Mandarin or, 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 or mm-hmm. white supremacist Gwen Stacy. It happened for four issues. Don't ask me questions. Um, you're able to say, oh, we understand the sensibilities and the attitudes of these characters and the care with which these characters must be handled from the outset. And you get creators who are so invested, whether it's um, e-viewing or Brian Michael Bendis on Miles, like you've got, or and on Riri, you've got people who give a shit about the, what they're doing, who understand their legacy. I recorded a UD pod today, and one of the conversations I had with my dad, go listen, because I know you guys like him more than me. Um, was about how the Williams sisters at no point in their career shied away from the gravity of what they were doing, of who they were, of who they were, of the role models they were going to be. And in that, in that sense, that's the way I feel about Miles and Riri and, and Kamala, because it feels to me like the writers went in and said, I know I'm going to make a statement, and I'm, I'm here for that weight. And I love that. Yeah, it's great. Um, I'm just happy to see her come this far, and, the She-Hulk, was a, and She-Hulk was a book that I read with my little sister that has a special place for me because it inspired her to go to law school and she's been flourishing ever since. Even though I'm, they may be far away at this point, Feige <clears throat> for sure knew how to get me all the money from newer fans like me. And again, they're not that far off. So it's like, it's putting them out there and letting you know what, what's coming on the pipe and knowing that you're going to get them is, is great. Um, <clears throat> lastly, yo, when they announced the Obi-Wan show, I was screaming, Kathleen is so good at her job, bro. Folks acting like she doesn't know what she's doing and they're, pl- and she's pl- and they're playing themselves. What would you like to see from the Obi-Wan show? Personally, I would like to see him doing a bit of exploring before finally settling back down on Tatooine and to look after Luke. One last job kind of story, but not getting too invested in theories, but also be cool to see some book characters here and there and any kind of the upcoming shows would be great. Like Ray Sloan or some of the kids from Lost, uh, from, from Lost Stars as well as the folks like Afro. Don't know how much how, how that works with timelines wise, but man, there is so much to be excited about with Disney+. Plus. Day one for me, as soon as I get the details on the UK launch, Disney knows how to do that, at least. Shout out to DC Universe. Okay, have a good one, Felix, out. Um, so one, <clears throat> you got to remember, well, one, I like the fact that they put out, they've started putting out their own little timeline, kind of like, mm-hmm. the, like what Marvel does with the phases. So you have different timelines. There's a huge gap in certain places where you can put pieces in there. But I like to remind people, because I know people didn't see it. Um, one of the surprising things that happened in Solo was they again following what's happening in Clone Wars, thing like that. Darth Maul is alive, and so depending on where they put this, uh, this Obi Wan show is, there could be at some point a showdown with Darth Maul. Um, maybe not the final one because we know that that happens in you know <clears throat> the anime shows, but you know he could play a role there. So there's a lot they could do with that, um, and um, it would be interesting to see. You know, because it affects the time. I so. am all for this. I would love the story of even him getting the baby the tattooing mm-hmm. on some lone wolf and cub type shit. <laughs> like the, the masterless Rowan Jedi wandering the spaceways to keep the war away from tattooing. Because that's what something else that we kind of brush over is that it's not as oppressed as some, it's not as large of an imperial presence as some of the other star systems. Mm-hmm. And the role that you know, maybe Obi Wan's played in that. Yeah, there's lots they could do with it. I'm 
I'm intrigued and interested in seeing what they're doing. Um, I'm here for it. So, and I saw that Mandalor- Mandalorian trailer. So, come on, yo. We Let's need, go, John Favreau. We, we you need, got this. We need to have a talk about how our Werner Herzog just shows up in some nerd properties. Because it took me a while to realize that he was not, he, he was in Rick and Morty voicing uh, Scrimply Pibbles, you know. Um, oh, and yeah. He be, he, he be having some fun. Like, <laughs> Werner Herzog be having him some fun. So, um, yeah. So, uh, new email, uh, second to last email uh, here from Jose says, hello, MTR team. Hope you guys had a great August. My question is more about the create, uh, more of a creative exercise since you probably, since you probably already have a whole bunch of questions about certain superhero announcements. If you guys were to put in charge of creating a comic book imprint like Marvel Knights, Wonder Comics, or Young Animal, what would the big idea be? What kind of themes and characters would you focus on? Finally, what kind of writers and artists would you hire for the imprint? Hope this is a fun one. Thanks for the content. Do you have any ideas for this? Mine's a cop out. Okay. I would do the ultimate universe game and I would just let me do it. Just let me do it. I have an idea. Just let me do it. Just give me the reins and let me tell my Marvel universe. I don't, I don't know. I thought about this one wrong and hard. I, cause I'm, I don't, I guess I'm not as beholden to imprints as other people are. So they've never really, right. They've really too. never done anything for me. Um, so I, this has never been something that really, really did it for me. Um, I know uh it seems more of a DC thing too. At least out of the big two. Um I'm, mm. not to say that Marvel doesn't do it, but um I think that's one of the things and you see this when it comes to the movie stuff. Um they do a really good job of allowing people to just go out and tell these kind of one off stories outside of continuity. Right. Um but um yeah, I don't really have anything. There's nothing I would you know what I would do? I would do an imprint if you do it Marvel or DC, I'd do probably do it DC first. Just call the losers and books that haven't worked, pro- constantly haven't worked, and we get it and get some new young talent. And say, come, come reinvent, or they have, or they worked in the past. Come reinvent Elongated Man. Hmm. You got six. Everyone gets six issues. You know what? That's so it's, it's. You want a testing ground, and you want these properties that you're sitting around. They're doing something similar with the. Um, I forget what the name of the um, imprint is, but the Young Justice is on. They're, do- they're giving uh, the Wonder Twins their own book. I thought about that. I want that kind of test kitchen where you get someone to say, like the Dial H for Heroes back. Like that's the kind of idea I think I would like to take and tackle. And, and not even the small properties. Like, let's be really real. No one's really landed the Shazam boat yet. I mean, in, in, when you think about it, when it comes to talent, you get somebody, some people that are trying to break in. Mm-hmm. Because now you give them, and, and you, you take the pressure off on them. You're saying, we're going to give you 12 issues. 12 issues of this character is a book that sometimes doesn't take off. And even if it doesn't, you can at least see what kind of story you fold that character, character in. You can incorporate it. Exactly. You can throw it out. Exactly. You give, you give people a way to test with some of the things that haven't worked out before and kind of build, build their own, their own way in their own styles inside of, inside of these, you know, Marvel and DC, particularly DC, you know? So, yeah. Um, sorry, we're copping out on that one, but I, I think that's where it sits for me. Because I get, I'm just not a big imprint person. Don't really, doesn't really. Sit, I I know some people are. Some people hear that stuff and they they jump on it. And me, I'm just like, okay, whatever. Um, good for them, but just with me. Um, all right. Last email in from Trojan Scooter says, "What's up, Chris and Deepom? During the poll this episode, you guys mentioned that Wally is your Flash and that he's the fastest man alive." I'm well aware that Flash is, uh, uh, Wally is the fastest due to him winning the Flash War. Everything that happened to him during the Titans books and during the Flash War made me very sympathetic towards the red-headed speedster. I have a different question for you, too. Who is your reverse Flash? Is it Earbot Thawn from the comics or Earbot who stole Harrison Wells' identity? Is it um, Edward Clarice from Jay Garrick's Earth? For me, it's Hunter Zolman. Uh, what Wilmson's run le- leading up to and following Flash War made appreciate the character more. Keep the good work, and I'll keep listening. Um, you'll probably hear more of this when we do our character corner short on Wally West. But I'll let Deepom go first. But it's Thawne in the comics. There's not a comparison. Thawne in the comics, particularly for like us who are Wally fans, he was the Spectre. He wasn't even a real like piece of fear. It was the fear of fear. And then when they brought him back in Wally's book as the return of Barry Allen, mm-hmm. that's it. 
They bring him back again at the end of um, Jeff Johns' run with Wally when, they're, when he, he, he runs back through time. And the introduction is earmarked on the reverse flash. He's as fast as any of us and as twisted as Grog. He's like, Hunter Zalman's crazy because he went crazy. This is a serial killer with super speed. It's, it's funny to me because, like, they're all so good. Right? Yes. Like, go to the, go to, the, if you ask me, if you ask me, in the, I'd go, oh, yeah, obviously Tom Havanoff's uh, Thawne is the greatest. But then I watched that season, was it season two of Legend of Tomorrow? And I can't remember the actor who plays, who plays Thawne there. And I'm uh, like, Mike, Matt Lancaster. Mike, and I'm like, oh, but he's so good too. Mm-hmm. So it's like, then I'm like, oh, I like both of them. Um, and then, like, I, 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 I'm with you on the Thawn, like, Thawne's there, but like, I did go back and re- reread uh, Flash War for our little character corner short. And um, Hunter Zolomon, I just love the Hunter Zolomon's whole thing. He's like, he's the worst kind of villain because his whole thing is, I'm, he's doing- I'm doing it to make you better. Right. It's like, there's nothing, nothing haunts me more. Like all the other stuff that's on, but nothing haunts me more than when, when, when uh, uh, Hunter leans over and tells Wally there were two. There were twin. And I'm you're, making you're not wrong. You're 100 percent right. It just, it, you know what I love about you know what I love about Thon? Mm-hmm. Is that no matter what he does to Barry, he can't kill him. Right. Because he has to inspire Earbot Thon to become the reverse right. flash. So it's just a it's an ongoing torture. It's literally just torture. There's no end game for Thon. Like they're both. I, we, we like both of them are just they're 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 some of the perfect villains. They're, they're so good. They're they're, right. they're both some of the perfect villains for the for the hero they're mass up against because it's just like they it's just oh they're so when good. they meet in that flash run and mm-hmm. he says my own legacy before I'm even born it's upside down it's backwards it's reverse it's perfect mm-hmm. yo. <sighs> <sighs> I love them. I I, it, I I love them. I hate them. It's just uh, so. we should do a reverse flash movie with no flash in it. No, no, no flash. And his name is just going to be Earhart Thought as we sit in the thirties. We don't do this on video, <laughs> but I wish the deep home can see the video on my face right now. It's a good segue in though to some of our some of our non email uh, discussion we're gonna have. So the early uh, reviews are in for the Joker film, and as I as expected, they're good. People are lauding over the films. Or, well, it's so good. Um, I'm telling you guys right now, I'm not watching this shit. You can what watch if you get the screener? Screen? Huh? What if you get a screener? Still not going. I've already made the decision. <laughs> um, I just don't... I, here's the thing, guys. And, and you know... Okay. People are all in my mentions about it before, and I know I've seen some people go, oh... <clears throat> I get it. If you're not if you're, if you're not a comic book reader and you're like, "Well, I want to see something different," I'll, let me tell you why that makes you so fucking upset. All right, and I'm, I'm trying. Comic what are you gonna say? You're trying to do. I'm trying not to to like be a complete asshole to people, but like, what some of the things I hear when people defend what's going on here is so dumb, and it's only being said because you don't respect comic books. You would never say that I'm tired of seeing romantic comedies, so I'm now going to go see this film made by this person who also hates romantic comedies and decided he's going to turn it into an action film with no romance or comedy in it. You would say that was dumb because you're like, what the fuck? I'm in, I get all these people saying the same thing. It's like, well, you guys are just... I just want variety. I want something different. I mean, the MCU is different. Shazam is different. Hell, Wonder Woman no, and Aquaman. No, no, no. Aqu- just, just dark different, bro. Right. Like, I, you know, Aquaman and Wonder Woman, they're all different films. They're all different from each other. Whether you're quality or what, what not, <laughs> doesn't matter. They're all fucking different films. What, what drives me crazy, though, is the genre is like action. Comic book is not a genre, right? Not. Right. So you don't go and say, I want to see an action film that's different from other action films specifically because it doesn't have action in it. And when I hear you all say you're fine with this because it's different and the people who are making the film are saying it's different because 
it's going to redefine comic books by not doing anything from the comic book. It sounds like you guys don't know what the fuck you're talking about. And, and that's when my problem comes in with this film. Is I'm pretty sure it's a good film. It sounds like Joaquin Phoenix puts in a hell of a fucking performance. But it sounds like, and even I was reading one review where it's like, oh, yeah, the film's great, but where, where it stumbles is when it brings in anything related to Gotham. So I'm like, so you're praising the film for everything except for anything that's related to the actual the comic books elements of it. It's just even being in Gotham. So, and I'm like... So I'm with you. I'm, I'm never going to see this movie. So, <sighs> I've done some review scouring. Chris, tell me if this sounds familiar. A man who thinks he's funny is told by the world he's not funny, and he gets so distraught with the, with the world that he takes it on them in a form of art that some would find vengeful and divisive. Am I describing the joke of the movie, or am I describing director of The Hangover, Todd Phillips, being told his fried humor is not funny anymore, and then making an angry white man movie about it called The Joker? This is not a film about a DC character, an iconic, iconic DC character that was created in the 1940s. Nope. It's not that Why film. Why would you do that shit? And, and, and so that's where my problem comes in at. There's not a problem saying, like, there's, there, I, was, I, was, I was telling, it was like, you can go back and tell, um, you can tell the Joker story that's based on the comics, and it'd be dark and crazy. Like, you go back and tell the one about, uh, from the uh, Scott Snyder's run, The Friend, where it's basically no. wh- th- that story. That story where he basically. Uh, ends up haunting this fucking journalist for five fucking years. You tell that fucking story. That's a story. But the joke, the, the journal, the Joker messes with this journalist one day a year, every five years, and the journalist ends up in fucking Arkham under the care of a disguised Joker. Like that's a that's better than incel that, the prologue that the joker film looks like that's a be. dark story that's a that's a gritty story that's a story that you can tell in an elsewhere story if you want to like there's not the it's a standalone story you can tell that story that's not what they're doing here and so when i say that it's insulting to me as a comic book reader because what you're doing is people that are saying that they want to see because they want something different from comic books or for, if it's from Todd Phillips or from Mark Maron for anybody who's making these films, what you're basically telling me is that comic books aren't serious enough for you. And you don't consider comic books serious enough and they need to be saved. You don't say that about any other fucking genre. You don't say that about any other fucking... Like, honestly, we love John Wick because of the action, but John Wick is telling this is a fucking basic ass sto- fucking story. Guy goes and gets revenge on all these people trying to kill him. Like we've seen the story a million hey, fucking times. Nobody, let's, let's, let's relax. No, 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 no. But it's serious, right? There's only but so many of these stories to tell. You know, so yeah. If the the problem is that yeah, good guy has an issue comes. Yeah, the general basis of all these stories are all told the same way all over the fucking place. It's how you tell the fucking story that's different. So that's why Black Panther is different from Thor, even though they're both stories of, of, of children of, of, of monarchs, you know, becoming into their own power. Like, they're different. You're, nobody would ever confuse Thor with Black Panther, though. They're different fucking stories. Right. You know, you don't confuse, and you don't confuse that with, you don't confuse either of those with Wonder Woman. You know, when I say that people are going, oh, well, you know, just because, it's, you know, comic books tell different kinds of stories, there are different kinds of interpretations of the Joker. That's there. I'm like, yes, but they're all still related to Batman. That's not what this Joker film is. This Joker film is some assholes going to create a fucking film about using the character, the Joker, as a name only to tell their his basically what you just said, his own fucking story. It's not related to any of the books. Well, that's what I want. Well, then you don't want a comic book movie. If you are doing a comic book movie involving Batman or a, a character like Batman, or a character like Joker, or somebody like that, you're tying it into a larger world. Even if it's a one-off movie, that character is tied to the larger world because that is what it is. If you don't want that, then you do not make a Joker film. Right. Doesn't, mean, doesn't need, need to be a cinematic universe, but it's still part of a larger universe. That's why we have that comic book character. That's what my issue with this. So I'm not going to see it. Same thing they did with with Logan, and I've seen this before, and we're, again, I'll give it to him at least this way, they're at least making the films good, 
standalone good if you take it outside the comic character part. They're at least, you know, fundamentally good films. But I've lived through this before. This is how you get, honestly, I mean, it's a terrible film, but this is how you get more Mario Brothers, guys. Mario Brothers, the film, has nothing to do with that fucking video game. Nothing. But it's because of things like this. Oh, I'm going to take it and do my own thing. It's actually the exact reason why video game movies suck today. Because every single video game movie that gets made, the person who makes that video game movie either didn't play the fucking game, didn't care about the story that was written for those games, and said, I'm going to tell my own story using those characters. And they're 99% of them are terrible and trash. So no, I'm not watching, and it doesn't help that it's a fucking incel, it sounds like, like a very incel-like movie. It's the first two acts of the three-act play that ends in a mass shooting. No, I'm good. I'm good. I don't... I don't, pass. Need, that. I don't need that. You know, let other I'll, read their, I'll read their confession later. Hey, listen, let people, let people watch it. Hey, it, it's, 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 it's going to get nominated. Hell, it might even be the film that wins, for, uh, the comic book film that wins for an Oscar, because you know why? The people that wanted to win... Wanted to want it, want to stick their nose, and they hate the idea that and it's, not just, just, it, it, <laughs> it's not just sorry. MCU, but it's, it's other. They, they hate the idea uh, that these films are good, they hate the idea that Endgame just broke the record for They think that that's a, that's a trash movie and it's denigrating the, the, the well, film. You got to remember this also it's these brothers who directed Community coming in and knocking off. For the first time ever, first time in a very long time, the most watched movie of all time, the most uh, revenue generating movie of all time, is not made by Spielberg, Lucas, or Cameron. Right. And they so keep I'm just excited. I'm just really excited for when they get to, um, if, if they do win, they can see Todd Phillips also directed Road Trip, Old School, Starsky and Hutch, The Hangover Trilogy, and Due Date. Fuck this guy. I'm just, all right. You guys got it. So. You'll get a review. Um, Joy's gonna see it at TIFF. I actually leave before it premieres at TIFF, so I won't. I don't have the. I, I now have an excuse. I'm not. I'm not gonna do it. Not gonna do it. Well, Chris, how are you gonna be able to make your picks for Oscars? Hey, listen. If them white people cannot watch black films and still vote for for Oscar <laughs> films like that, guess what, motherfucker? I'm pulling my black card. I'm doing the same thing. I won't be fucking watching Joker. I'm sorry. Fuck it. You're not gonna do that. If you want to make your film, if they, here's the thing, I, I probably wouldn't have said anything if they just kept their fucking mouth shut, let their film speak for itself and said something, but the minute that they all started coming out, trying to shit on other comic films, and shit on comic book readers, and shit on fans of comic book movies, fuck you. You don't want my money? You don't need my money? You don't need my fucking vote? You don't need my fucking review? You got it, dude. You're good. Not gonna get it from me. Don't need it. Mm-mm, I'm done with that. There's too many other good things out here for me to watch. And, um, you know, good black films get skipped over all the time by white critics. So this was one black critic is going to skip over this white ass fuck film. So you're good. So, um, let's talk briefly. We kind of talked, talked around a little bit. Uh, so the Sony and, and Disney, uh, Spider-Man breakup. Um, I kind of said this on the nerd off before. It was bound to happen. I just, I was just waiting for it. I thought that we at least get the third film out of the way. I mean, honestly, like it. I mean, did you think that it would that it had any? I, I, th- I, I thought we'd be good. I, I thought we'd get at least. The third I thought film. that Sony would not bite off his nose to spite his face, but here we are. Um, I also don't think the story's over. Yeah. Until they roll film on something that's not over. And the other thing is, this Disney has power move. The Sony guys have to be scrambling a little bit. I mean, the way I see it is, at the same time, I feel like Sony also had to. You can't say, you can't agree to a 50% financing, co-financing on Spider-Man. That wasn't the, that wasn't the request. Well, let's go with that one. The it ask was, was 30. 70, 30. You still can't go with that. It's still too much. You, you, you can't start giving but, away pieces. But, but, but to have the ask actually be 70-30, to lie in the initial release, say it's 50-50, oh, 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 that's no, no. negotiating from a place of weakness. Oh, no, no, of course it is. Like, well, well, no, no. The, 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 I knew the entire thing was weakness when Disney didn't say a, a goddamn thing until D- D23. And it was basically, finally, Kevin Feige was like, oh, well, we had a good run, right? Um, that's the only thing you really kind of got from it. Um, I knew Disney was negotiating from a place of weakness 
when they started leaking stuff and then started answering their own fucking leaks and Disney <clears> still hadn't said anything. I was like, oh, oh, they're fucking scrambling. Okay. No, 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 no. So they, I, I think that um, Disney asked because like, and, and again, you know, once you start seeing Sony go, oh yeah, when you, once you start realizing that the highest grossing movie for Sony Pictures is a film that Kevin Feige makes he made for them. <laughs> Disney, and he got him an Oscar. And he got him an Oscar, you know, well, assuming that, that he, he was the uncredited, one of the uncredited producers, which I think is a good assumption. On Into the Spider Verse is a fair assumption. Um, you start going again, but it goes back to what I've always said is like, even with Venom, like when they made the Venom film, I like I thought it was a dumb move, but at the same time, they kind of had to do something because Sony has to prove that they can make films without Marvel, and I think they're doing it in a dumb way because I think they, if they were smart, they would have made a Miles live action film and done it that way. Or they would have, instead of trying to, they would have agreed to the co-financing deal with Marvel and then been like, but we're going to introduce uh, Miles and our Venom films to do it like that way. That would have made them bank. The first, life, the first movie they do and they put Miles in it, no matter how bad or good it is, it's going to make bank. It will. It just will. So I don't know why they didn't. I would have agreed to them if I was them. Yeah. Um. At least, at least until the third Tom Holland film came out. Then after that one, then you say, okay, cool, deal's over. Um. And and then we can pull Tom Holland and then you can kill him off and then you bring Miles. It was an easy way to do it. You kill Tom Holland off. Uh. You kill his his Peter Parker off and that third that third uh um MCU film and then you introduce Miles into the Sony the Sony uh movies. Done. Done. And they and it still could happen that way. Um. And you do it that way, and now Sony can go off on their own, and uh, when they fuck it up, because they will, um, we, we're right back to where we started, right? Um, so, I don't know. We'll see. I, I, Morbius is supposed to come out next year. <coughs> we'll see. Morbius with Jer- Jared Leto. Good luck. Because Venom, I can see. Morbius, though? Nobody's checking for Michael Morbius. <laughs> like you can, you can sell me. Yo, you, you can sell they me. They dropped on- him in PlayStation Four of Spider Man and didn't even make it. Like, yo, by the way, he's here too. Like, you can sell me on the idea that Venom could work, right? Because people are at least excited to see that. Morbius, though, Mm-mm. and that's what I think is going to happen. I think when Morbius comes out, depending on what the returns are. If they don't do well, I think there'll be a renegotiation with Sony and, and Disney. It might not even last oh, that for long. Sure. Might not even last that long, but um yeah. I can I can I can see that. Because um yeah. Uh, uh, the other side of this too is it c- this also could just be this could be negotiation from both of them kind of playing everybody because the other thing too is and this is the one truth that I did see come out of Sony. Kevin Feige is busy. He ain't got time to be producing. Going on. He don't got time to be producing another film. And I think that also came down to like a, a lot of people were saying that it was Disney being greedy. It's not being first of all, guys. I want you to go and work at your job. You know, get paid your job, but then also work another job for pennies. And then tell me that when you start asking for a raise of your second job, that you're you're being greedy. All right? No, they're not being fucking greedy. All right? They were doing the work. That entire, both Venom, if you want to be honest, both Venom and all those, they all made bank off of the, because even the idea of it being the MCU kind of got some people going, well, maybe for Venom, right? Right. And, and those two Spider-Man films that Sony, quote unquote, made, only made that fucking, Spider-Man Far From Home only makes a billion fucking dollars because it's in the MCU and, you know, Endgame just happened. It's the Endgame epilogue. It's the Endgame epilogue, all right? So that's the only reason why that main movie made money. So it's not Disney being fucking greedy to basically be like, hey, listen, we'll put 30% on this film. You put 70% in. We get the 30% off on, on that. Like, that's not being fucking greedy. It's actually still a really good fucking deal for Sony because it's still Sony making a bunch of fucking money off of another studio's hard ass work. All right. So let's get that fucking out of the way there. Um, but yeah, like they're busy. So I wouldn't be surprised if 
it's just a way to kind of jump, jump support. And then when Kevin Feige gets some time, then they go and make the deal for doing it. Because they're not, they're not planning on doing that Spider-Man film anytime soon anyway. So they had time. So we'll see. Um, but I'll tell you this one thing. If Tom Holland shows up in that Venom film, it's, it's over. It's a wrap. It's a wrap, kids. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. Um, all right, last thing. We've read, we already talked about this a little bit here. Talk about some D23 news. Um, out of the ones that were announced, which, is there one that stands out to you that's most exciting for you? No. It's not the most exciting. Uh, I, I think the take on She-Hulk is going to be dope because like, that's something you and I have talked about for a while. It's kind of ripe for television series for a long time. It's comedic, but it's also a lawyer drama. It's also a superhero drama. It can be three things at once. I'm excited for what they're going to do with that. Um, Moon Knight. Y'all going full crazy, Mark? <laughs> like that's, I mean, let's have a real conversation. Someone's like, well, will Moon Knight's Judaism be used? I'm like, fuck is Judaism? Will his psychosis be used? <laughs> Moon Knight thinks he is the Egyptian god of the moon, and he might be. Nah, I'm gonna need, yeah, I, that's the one where I'm like, where, where the hell t- the head tilt word like that's where that one comes in for me like oh look sh- don't don't do don't tell me show me show me right now yeah um yeah I, i'm i'm with you i it's just so much i love the new more news out of uh, uh i keep wanting to call it captain america and bucky uh falcon and Ken winter soldier uh they're going they're going they got u.s agent in we're going Give give Nick Spencer his dues. Oh, look! Once they announced that, they, they and I'm glad they doubled down and said that's what they're going to do. But MAGA cap was always happening. Oh yeah, of course, of course, of course, of course. I just love the fact that we 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 know we're doing this, and so just so everybody's on, just so we're all on the 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 same page here, we doing it, and I'm here for it, and let's go. Um. Yeah, man, I'm, 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 I love the fact that they sprinkled this all in there between the movies and this, like Disney plus is going to be, be everything we need. Like, uh, I, yeah, like Kevin Feige has got a whole, and I think that's, that, that will be the one thing I will say is will, another reason why I think it's, uh, um, it'll be an interesting, um, experiment is. This is also Kevin Feige doing a lot. I mean, like you said, what is it, 11 properties now in, in this two-year period or something yeah. like that? Yeah, that's, that's a lot of stuff for him to be producing and looking over. So it's a lot more than what we've been doing before. Before, we've just been doing it kind of from a movie point of view. So I think this is also, again, this phase four feels like a very big experimentation. And not in a bad way, but they're expanding. Um, and I will say that you know Kevin Feige has a team of other producers that work with him that are also going to probably be involved in all this stuff as well. So, um, and we know that these uh, movies, these TV shows are going to you know, impact and, and fall into and, and have some, some connection, a lot more connection than we're used to with the, the movies. So, um, yeah, man, I'm here for all of it, man. It's, 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 it's going to be great. Um, yeah. We got anything else on this one? Anything other big stuff? No, I just like D twenty three. Take the money, Disney. Like I'm, I'm over here because we've got the Hulu bundle with Showtime on it or HBO on it. I think. So now I'm trying to figure out what the best way for me to do because it may just be adding the seven dollars. So I don't need ESPN, and, I, and if you start adding ads to my Hulu experience, I may get it violent. So it may just be add the new seven. Like that may just be my move, and probably dump something else. But what? Wow, this dude is still in my mentions. I'm sorry. This dude is still in my mentions about. Oh, like, just turn it off. I just turn just, this why, guy off. How does he, like, why are you still here? Why are you still here? This is another. another I want to bring this up a little quickly. I always tell y'all I, I'm very funny to people, but Chris is the nice one. Or, excuse me, I'm the nice one. Chris is the mean one. Man. Because yeah, y'all are begging for it. <laughs> Give both barrels, Chris. That's all I can say. They earned it. Like, I, but I'm never going to because that's what they want, right? 
That's why they keep you going. Gave, you, so you little one poor boy up yesterday that I, I felt, almost felt bad. What? Oh, you talking about the boy when I told him that he was like, insignificant as the ant I stepped on? Negro? I was like, <laughs> look, man. But no, but see, that's the thing, right? You gotta let them know. You gotta, you gotta, you, you gotta not get angry while you also suck their soul out of their life, right? You just gotta just make it, it makes it hurt like, even more. It makes it hurt anymore. It's like, yeah, dude, I'm not gonna remember you after this. You know, like you, because they want. See, the thing, this is my approach with trolls. They want the debate. So, so again, I have another neat because I see a lot of people. The reason why, another reason why this stays in my mention so much is people do this. If you guys see me trolling back a troll, do not reply all. Because then what's going to happen is a lot of you all, what you guys do is you actually start actually having a conversation and try to actually talk to these people. You don't want that. You don't want to do that because that, 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 that makes you tired. I don't do that. I spend the entire day. They'll talk. I just, I just start saying random things like uh, one person. I just started trying to explain the X-Men to me. I was like, thank you for explaining Magneto to me. I don't read comics. Chris is basically Android 17 for <laughs> Dragon Ball Z fans. Like he, he is, he, the energy doesn't affect him. Yeah, no. Take yeah. it out of you. It yeah, won't yeah. affect him. Yeah, yeah, no, no. It's just like, you cannot let this stuff, you cannot let these people get to you. You cannot read. Like one person's like, you haven't, you haven't answered any of my points. I was like, yeah, because I haven't read your post. Like, I was like, I read every third letter of your, of your tweet. It's like, come on. And then he was like, but you answered my other thing before. I was like, oh yeah, I read that one, but I didn't read this one. But you just answered him like, I'm not, I, I can't read. <laughs> just like, you got to just say dumb things back to them because they're not real people. They all say the same thing, right? Another reason why I'm not fucking with the Joker film. A lot of these uh, release the center, uh, release the center cut folks seem to be all excited about the Joker film. What well, they think of the young white psychopaths who've gone unnoticed in the society, Chris? Just saying, man. This is one of those things where, like, it's like the Dave Chappelle thing. And you look around, you see a bunch of people agreeing with you, and if you see those people are kind of assholes and are not like good people, maybe you should reconsider your position. That's all I'm saying. The Nazis here. agree with you. You're wrong. Maybe you should reconsider your that, position. That's a broad generalization that I feel works. Yeah, yeah. So, all right, folks, that is the mailbag for uh, the month of August, even though it's September. Uh, for September, make sure you email us at mailbag at mtrnetwork.net. Thank you guys very much for listening. We will be back then soon. Um, yeah, folks. Matter of fact, uh, when that new mailbag comes in, we'll probably be ramping up for the shows. Man, we'll be, we'll be like, yeah, that'll be the last mailbag before the shows start back up for the fall. Man, I can't believe we're already time for that. So it'll be um, the last season of Arrow. We got the next season of Flash uh, and Legend of Tomorrow coming in. So, um, yeah, folks. So get your emails into us. So until next time, we are out of here. Peace.